Welcome, welcome, bienvenue guys, Marcel, Ernie Racing News, May 22nd, 2023, Russia wins major victory in Bakhmut. The eastern city of Bakhmut is now known by the Russian name Artyomovsk. I'm just destroyed that, but that's okay. A-R-T-Y-O-M-O-V-S-K is the na new name after Russia claimed that it has taken full control of the battleground city. Ukrainian dancing puppet President Zelensky has been reluctant to admit it. When asked if Ukraine still controlled the city, Zelensky said, I think no. He wouldn't know firsthand because he's been out of Ukraine since the Kremlin attack in early May anyways. Bakhmut is in the Donetsk region, which voted to join Russia last September of 2022. Ukraine has been fighting to change its mind even as most of the city's 7,000 res residents have fled, have since fled. The Western spin. So President Biden, old man Biden, says that the Russians have suffered over 100,000 casualties in Bakhmut, but no one knows where that number came from. He also said that Ukraine has, I quote, been able to lock down the Wagner Group, end quote. But the head of the Wagner Group says that the group will leave the area on Thursday and hand over control to the Russian military. No Western tanks or F-16s were used to defend Bakhmut, and President Biden says that they wouldn't have helped anyways. This is an important loss for Ukraine and the West, and even still, they say that a counteroffense is, is coming. Not in the winter, not in the spring, now it's too hot in the summer, but it's coming. The Wall Street Journal reports that Ukraine didn't fight very hard in Bakhmut anyway, because it insisted, quote, used that time to rearm and to bulk up its military, end quote. Do you buy that? <laughs> weapons? Sure, they got lots of weapons, lots of money, including uh, depleted uranium ones from UK that have been blown up in the last week. The West has kept them coming, but where do these extra personnel come from? Ukraine is certainly running short on personnel, even forcing people by gunpoint to go to the front lines. <laughs> They're still going to be running short, guys. Let's check out some footage on the Twitters. Here we have Armchair Warlord one day ago. The Battle of Bukmut is over. It was one of the longest battles of the 21st century to date and certainly the bloodiest. Russia won. In doing so, it destroyed much of the, the Ukrainian army's combat power while buying time to generate forces for future offenses. So he continues with Russian casualties were modest in comparison and critically largely occurred in auxiliary formation that is not part of the regular Russian military. The Wagner private military company, which bore the brunt of the fighting. And um, so here you have Russian casualties in Ukraine. I mean, this is just a, some me media zona with at least 1,575 confirmed PMC deaths from February 24th to May 17th. And it breaks it up in the areas. Like if you look at St. Pete in the top left and Moscow, you got 15 and 15. And then you roll it over to the Ukrainian side of 4,059. But again, St. Pete is 29, Moscow 23. Um, so you can do the, you know, Primors 5 verse 31 deaths. Um, some of the biggest one is Kuban, 150 and Rostov, 116. Um, to 53 and 28, um, according to this anyways. No, I, of course, I cannot verify any of this. He goes on, Ukrainian propagandists have begun predictable claiming that the battle somehow bought time for them to launch a strategic counteroffensive, which can be disproven with a simple ex examination of the state of play. Firstly, the Ukrainians already launched the multi-brigade counteroffensive in a failed attempt to, to retake the city, which failed with considerable losses and little ground taken, was the counteroffensive. If they planned to attack elsewhere, the lives of those men were wasted. Good point. He continues, there is a related talking point that the AFU only attacked with the brigades in the immediate area, which is very misleading. Ukrainian brigades are basically front sector commands that constantly churn through combat battalions. As such, the actual question is how many battalions a given brigade had assigned to it at that time. Also, the order of battle for the Ukrainian attack was and remains extremely murky beyond the heavy participation of Azon, the Avzon, the Avzon Battalion, essentially, one of the AFU's primary premier units. All right, guys, I'm moving on. I mean, you know, all that actual 
information and detail is kind of beyond me and maybe beyond you guys unless you're studying uh, army formations and etc which i'm not following former u.s senator capture of bamut biggest battle since world war ii by capturing artyomysk bakhmut russian forces won the biggest battle in europe since world war ii former u.s senator from virginia richard black told ria russia has won the biggest battle in europe since and it's kind of a just the devastated rooftops of a lot of those buildings there. Look at that. Just. Yeah, war, the war machine. It's kind of got to rebuild from there. Here's a lively comment from Kim.com. You sent 150 plus billion to Ukraine and they couldn't even hold Bakhmut. Russia has gained an enormous amount of territory and fires missiles, drones, and bombs at any target in Ukraine at will. Your war propaganda failed. Your sanctions failed. Nobody wants your stupid proxy war aimed at the USA, NATO. Here we have the large pro-Russian rally in Bakhmut in 2014, guys, March 1st. It says the people were demanding a refer refer referendum back in March 1st, 2014, after the Kiev government was new land eyes they refuse to accept the illegitimate u.s puppet regime and the de degradation of their basic human and democratic rights And so here's a, a Ukrainian soldier, Doomsayer, on Twitter. Made it back from Bakhmut in one piece. It was hell of an experience. And uh, you can see his boots are dirty as hell and his pants, but I'll take you to the joke now. And here you have all the pro-Ukraine, pro-war people. So thankful, so thankful, so thankful. Thank you, thank you, gods. We all know the stories too well. Thank you, thank you. Um, thank you, mate. You know, like, you know, yeah, people... Um, but again, all, these are all warlords. Everybody who's replying is pro-war. I would, I guess I'm making some assumptions. Let me just say there's a lot of Ukrainian flag. Look, U.S. and Ukrainian flag. Glad you were back. Thank you for all you do for the people of Ukraine. But I mean, what are they doing for Ukraine? Zelensky is just make, making all you guys get murdered for what? For his political interests and his allies. And it has nothing to do with Ukrainian people. None of these wars do, guys. None of these wars do. So, and then uh, let me continue. Let's go actually to Doomsayer's Twitter. An Aussie in Ukraine. Oh, wow. It just shows you the stupid, the stupid, stupid person putting his life on the line for, for these authoritarian dictators and elitists and the, like, oh my God, look at the corruption. And now he's like selling my MTAC combat pants here. So now he's trying to like raise some money, selling his pants doing his little oh i'm trying to raise a um, whatever a million dollars for ukraine um there's his pants you can buy his pants but again this aussie helped drones and flying drones this is so ridiculous here they have an aussie like who's gonna eventually be dead in ukraine for for the puppets for the elitists and their puppets wow good on you buddy good on you Oh, here we have the New York Times doing their little piece. Bakhmut is where the longest and bloodiest battle of Ukraine war has raged for months. Drone footage taken by the New York Times captured the scorching buildings, destroyed schools and cratered parks that now define the once peaceful city. Obliterated. Uh, yeah, the city is definitely destroyed. Russia declares its soldiers have taken over the city and what's the war's longest war? Russia's turned a peaceful city into rubble. Yeah, that's all they're doing, right? It has nothing to do with, like, it's the, it's the freaking war zone. It's the front lines. Here's maybe a statistic. Uh, who knows about it? But um, the Ukrainian army losses in Bakhmut since February 22nd, 2022. So a year and a couple months or a few months have mounted more than 55,000 soldiers. This is three times greater than what the Soviet Union lost during 10 years in Afghanistan. Wagner's mission is to crush the Ukrainian army and not give them. Well, this could be interesting. This is the Ukrainian terrorist attacking Belgrade. His name is Luka Botkavich. 
This NATO assassin is dragging Russian children out of their home and executing them because NATO failed to hold Bakhmut after spending trillions. Yeah, who knows? Who knows? Just something to read. Then here's, you know, the other side of uh, whatever truth propaganda. Who knows, right? You got the soldier talking. Of course, it's none of it's transcribed. <clears throat> Wagner recorded a video talking and pointed out the problems of taking Bakhmut Bakhmut was taken at the cost of tens of thousands of elite units of the Russian Federation. The city destroyed to the ground was not worth such sacrifices for the Russian army. It's a big loss. And then into the comments, um, here you have Putin, a war criminal. I think all you Russians should leave Ukraine then. Save your lives and leave before it's too late. Ukraine really played this well. Sucked in and liquidated 100,000 Russian forces while slowly retreating and then opened up attacks on the flanks. Russians only realized what happened after they think they'd been taken. They'd taken the city in the worst part of Russia is they cannot hold it. Yeah, we'll see, I guess. So I guess the first question is, is why is the guy wearing a helmet that looks like it's from 50 years ago? Um, Yeah, second question, is that um, even speaking Russian? You know, who knows, right? You can never know what these people... Oh, this is a pretty cool little um, transfer of photos from the satellites. Um, what, this is what liberation looks like. You know, it's obviously a piece. Maybe then uh, we should be uh, not pro-war, right? Okay, okay, here is Zelensky. <clears throat> I can honestly say that the photos destroyed Hiroshima. Remind me of Bakhmut and other such towns. There is absolutely nothing alive. All the buildings are destroyed. There is not even an understanding of where each street is and where each building is. This is absolute total destruction. There is nothing. There are no people. This is um, interesting. It's like a comparison to the size of the U U.S. To here is Bakhmut, Bakhmut. Western media won't show you this. So, essentially, there you have Bakhmut and the size. You know, it's there's New Jersey hiding under there, um, and then and onward, onward, North Carolina. It, it also it shows you the attack positions for the rest of essentially Ukraine, or as if it was in the U.S. Like you've taken over New York, New Jersey, and now you have a lot of strategic positions all along the border here. This walking meme explains that Bakhmut was a trap and now all Russians are encircled. Yeah, so stay away from dr drugs, kids. What a freak! <laughs> Они взяли Бахмут, а ВСУ, как я сказал, группировка более 100 тысяч, окружила все бахмутское направление. Это самый большой котел. Вот так он выглядит. И именно об этом я и говорю. I'm sorry. Oh, sorry, you gotta pause it. Just, ah, I can't stop looking at this guy. Just, there's no way to pay attention to anything. The battle for Bakhmut also known as Musk, has made headlines for months as mainstream networks downplayed both Russian gains and Ukrainian losses. All while Zelensky used the key Donbass city as one of his favorite references in his many fundraising speeches to the West. In fact, back in December, Zelensky told the United States Congress that if they just approved enough money and weapons for Ukraine, then the battle would change the trajectory of the war. To ensure... Bakhmut is not just a stronghold that holds back the Russian army, but for the Russian army to completely pull out, more cannons and shells are needed 
If so, just like the battle of Saratoga, the fight for Bakhmut will change the trajectory of our war. That kind of language continued into February when the media was obsessing over plans for a reported spring counteroffensive that was supposed to be launched by Ukraine. And Zelensky was telling EU leaders he needed more lethal aid because Bakhmut was Ukraine's fortress. Nobody will give away Bakhmut. We will fight for as long as we can. We consider Bakhmut our fortress. There you go. Now you have it. Now you understand from whatever he's talking about, whatever bullshit he's slinging, that his bullshit was saying that Bakhmut was very, 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 very important. Fast forward to present day, and not only has that overhyped promise of a counteroffensive been, well, just that, but now that the Wagner private military group has taken full control of the city and is preparing to hand it over to the Russian military, Zelensky has completely changed his tune, and he now claims that there's no fortress left to fight for. The Russians say they've taken Bakhmut. I think no. But you have to, to understand that there is nothing. They destroyed everything. There are no buildings. It's a pity. It's tragedy. But for, for today, Bakhmut is only in our hearts. But I'm old enough to remember when Zelensky refused to back down, refused to stop sending his men to die in the region that was labeled by one Ukrainian reporter as a senseless meat grinder because troops were being destroyed as soon as they arrived. Back in March, Zelensky doubled down on the vow that the Ukrainian military would not retreat, even as they were clearly encircled by Russian forces. Bang. It didn't matter to him how many of his troops were... Yeah, wow. <laughs> She's nailing it guys bam being sacrificed even as the chief of the wagner group admitted that the goal for his company wasn't just about control of the city but about the quote destruction of the ukrainian army and the reduction of its combat potential the u.s also made it clear that it didn't care about the death and destruction as joe biden kept pledging more lethal aid for ukraine while defense secretary lloyd austin admitted in march that Again, to the very last Ukrainian. U.S. doesn't care about Ukrainian people. They don't care about the soldiers, Ukrainian. Nobody cares. These politicians don't care. At this very moment, BlackRock is buying up all, the, all of freaking Ukraine. The oil companies are making contracts to, to suck the blood out of the, the earth. It all comes down to money, power, control. It's that simple. It's all wars have always been like this, including this proxy war against Russia with their biolabs and their military bases all along the Russian border instigating this as well. The fight was more of a symbolic value than a strategic and operational value. Speaking of symbolic value, Zelensky's latest fundraising pitch was delivered to G7 leaders during their summit in Hiroshima, where he had the audacity to claim that today's back move reminds him of photos of the Japanese city after it was destroyed by an atomic bomb. Yeah, yeah, atomic bomb. The kind of beating that they have for months without your morale sinking. Uh, I pay tribute to them all the time for their courage, but you're also running out of soldiers. I, I think Bakhmut became to Zelensky in many ways what Stalingrad became to Hitler. Mm. Remember, Stalingrad really did not have any strategic value at the point in time when the, the, the Germans arrived there. The only thing of value there was an aviation manufacturing facility, a big factory that built aircraft. That had been destroyed by the Luftwaffe. So... There was really no reason to stay in Stalingrad when it became clear what the Soviets were going to do. But Hitler was obsessed with the place and felt that this was a, a grudge match of sorts with Stalin and with communism. And so he turned Stalingrad literally into a disaster. I think uh, that's what Zelensky has done. And of course, Sorovikin back in the fall, in October, November, December time frame, was the one who said, fine, let's uh, establish this. As a trap, let's invite as many Ukrainians in who, who want to come. So there was always an intention to leave a road out uh, because that road could be used to resupply.
Oh, this is really cool. Here, we're giving up gold coins, guys, for the Wagner Group, that privatized military that took over Bakhmut. That is the last neighborhood in uh, Artemovsk or in Bakhmut that was liberated by the Wagner PMC group. And that is Ukrainian artillery attacking the neighborhood at this point, not so much as to achieve a result or help their troops, but out of spite for being forced out of the city, forced out of Bakhmut, the battle is over. We are on the western edges of the city. This is the now infamous Domino district, or all that's, all that's left of it. Over there is the Gnesto, or Nest district, and over there, Samalot district. Ukrainian troops have withdrawn into the hills and the woods over there, over there, west of the city. And fi let's finish off with the old man geezer. See if you can put some sentences together. Bakhmut. Bakhmut is a, a discussion about whether or not it's been lost or whatever. <laughs> and well, the truth of the matter is, the Russians have suffered over 100,000 casualties in Bakhmut. It's hard to make up. It's hard to make up. So oh my God, it's hard to make up. It's hard to make up. Double, doubling down on his lie, it sounds like to me. Whether or not there is there are troops in Bakhmut occupying, there's not many buildings left standing in Bakhmut. It's a pretty devastated city. But they have been able to move in a direction that they've been able to lock down an awful lot of the Russian forces, including the Wagner group. So, with regard to the F-16s, F-16s would not have helped in that regard at all. It was unnecessary, for example, let's take just Bakhmut, for example. Bakhmut. Okay, guys, this is Ernie Racing News. I'm just trying to find the, whatever information is out there on Bakhmut and, uh, and essentially the loss uh, for the Ukrainians and for the West, or in allies, the, the NATO West. And this old geezer in front of you here, um, and obviously a win for Putin, the Russians, and the Wagner group. So that's it, guys. Ernie Racing News, um, May 22nd reporting. 20